So my name is Michael Zeev, and this is my video about the classes that I am doing online, and I've been doing them offline also. Um, and I call my classes Mystic Art Circle, and they are a combination of process painting and art appreciation and uh, grounding it all in a spiritual context. So uh, a context of inquiry, of, of deep inner and outer listening. Um, and it's uh, a, a kind of a open format in, in which people can really play with what they want to play with as far as materials, etc. So my friend uh, and student, um, Jennifer Robin is here to, to discuss this with me. And um, she's been in my class for quite a long time. And uh, she's a great artist and author. Um, so Jennifer, why don't you introduce yourself and well, Michael and I always really enjoy having a dialogue, and I think all of us do. There's a lot to talk about when you open up this field of inquiry into what is the process of making art and uh, what are all the different aspects that enrich it for us. I have been a, a painter for about 25 years, doing mostly landscapes and primarily outdoors. And I started that because I love the beauty of the outdoors. And I did it over the years, usually weekly with a group of other artists and of course enjoyed it. But as time went on, and actually I got a little bit better and got more recognition, I found myself feeling a little bit like an outlier. I, I There was a lot of emphasis on having shows and selling your work and and a fair amount of, I want to say friendly competition amongst the painters, but competition nonetheless. And one summer, a few years ago, I noticed I didn't really want to paint anymore. I wasn't really that interested in, even in the landscape. And I just, by happenstance, saw a flyer for your class, Michael, and thought, oh, you know, let me let me try that. And it, it opened up a whole new world for me in terms of both material, different kinds of imagination, things to paint, a freedom to not be part of kind of a critique group, to not be in a, a just just painting the realistic semi-expressionist landscape. And it also uncovered for me many layers of the critic of ideas I had assumed I had to be as an artist, that you didn't really have value unless you showed your work and sold your work. And in the last few years of, of painting with your process arts, with the mystic art circles, it's freed me to really discover myself in a whole new way as an artist. And even when I paint the landscape now, it's really from a different perspective and context. Yeah, it's it's been such a pleasure to see you grow it as an artist and evolve and um, uh, how, how you just dived into um, this part of your self that uh, of your artistic self that you didn't really know was there, I think. Um, but you were so happy to discover. Yes. I, really, I loved it. It's, it's always on my, there, there, it's that the day of our class is in ink. I never want to miss it. Whereas when it was a time to go out painting outdoors, I sometimes really had to kind of push myself to show up. And this, I, I always, look forward to meeting myself there you know there's gonna it's about me and my journey and it's about seeing other students and their experiences and their the the all the different levels of painters that come to your class and what they bring to it is as fascinating as my own journey yeah and i think that you can vouch for this that uh 
doing the the more experimental work or process oriented oriented work in the class has has strengthened your um, your abilities your formal abilities of art making that you were you were working on before like a lot a lot of students so many people are taking classes in technique now right watercolor classes and all of this so when those people come to my class they can kind of drop all that and play but then they go back to their their technique that they're working on and they feel so much more alive and free it's so true is that we find our voice and the voice when you, when you feel this authentic voice some of your training and background sort of comes up to support that in a different way it's very true i like the work i've done much more i've also because of the critiques that we do we don't really do critiques we talk about the work i've i've learned things about by looking at different artists different painters in the class about line and just the cure our curiosity is peaked more so instead of the defensiveness that a lot of painters experience when they're with each other there's a kind of a a need to, to keep a hierarchy of who's the top painter and you know who's the beginner and, and that is completely irrelevant in your in your group so it, it has been freeing in that way too mm -hmm. we've had some fascinating people come and go in our in our class yeah they should mention maybe mention a little bit about Anna Lisa she's a great example uh, yeah, I, I don't think she had art background at all, uh, but she was uh, mourning uh, the loss of uh, her husband, and um, she really needed something like this, some creative outlet to help her through, and I think it's just been, she's an amazing artist. She is an amazing I mean, artist. she's just an amazing artist, um, and it, it, it's... Yeah, it's just amazing to see uh, how much people get from making images and, you know, um, following the, the inner thread of um, their, their emotional life and their, their spiritual life. So, you know, we like to, in, in my class, I, I, from the beginning, you know, we, we do a little meditation and a grounding and um, it, it's, it's a place where people can feel at ease, comfortable and in a sacred container so that they can, you know, feel free to dive into areas that might be difficult and uh, I think that sacred quality sets it up so that um, it can go pretty deep. And um, is that why you changed the name from process arts to mystic arts? Do you think? Well, the other name I had, the original name for my class was somatic. Um, inquiry or something and somatic inquiry and process painting and then I changed it later on to recognition art circle because I wanted to people to recognize through the process work their true nature so their true nature of of peace and um expansive awareness and all, all all of these beautiful spiritual ideas that's our true nature so then uh, it didn't seem like everybody was maybe grasping that so I changed it to mystic art circle because this is more to the point because when I'm showing the artists of the past in the slideshows these people were all mystics and they were all uh, about uh, this inquiry into true nature. It's, it's, their... been, it's been fascinating. And, and tell us a little bit about how this mystic 
development of other artists came in because of our our the fact that we could no longer meet in person. And when shelter in place happened, we went immediately into a Zoom format, even though it was new and none of us were really familiar with that. We were used to being together. Tell us how that evolved. That's really where the the shift happens, it seems, now that I hear you say it, as it became a mystic time for us as we shared shared this this journey of Mm. being isolated. Right. Right. It's yeah, tell us a little bit more about how it changed when we went to Zoom. Yeah, well, um I had I had uh brought books to class to show folks uh art that they hadn't been familiar with because I found that in the process painting, which is the format of, of this class, it's not about um technique per se. So you know, a lot of process uh, painters don't have any arts background, and eventually, I think they can keep going like that. That's fine, but for a lot of people, it it can really aid them to find out more about the history of art. Not not necessarily in the way that it's presented academically. But in a way of, yeah, these these people were all really mystical. And, you know, they talked about, um, they talked like mystics. And uh, anyways, back to your question, when we went online, I found that, wow, I can show slides and I can give a really great presentation. Um, that I couldn't do in class, really. It was not so, I, maybe I didn't think of it, but it's all different online. And there's that inner quality of of, of the online Zoom. So um, it changed the nature of the class. And um, I don't know. One of the things about it is, in terms of the class is that after we've been saturated with whatever artists we look at, many of the students jump right in and, and go run with what they've just seen, whether it's the, the subject matter or the way the, the space is divided. I know it started, I started experimenting with making angles and, and geometrics in some of my paintings after we saw Paul Clay. And uh, uh, there's that aspect of the immediacy of just getting to look at art and then get to play around with it. It's been been really, and then fun to see what the other students do, all so different. And the other thing that I've loved is in your selection, you really look at the artists later in their career. And that's when the most interesting work happens. And that is probably, as someone in their 60s, been this, such so important to me to see that this, as you become an older person, the fear of needing to fit in as a uh, success starts to diminish and and seeing these other artists really break away from their own success and, and experiment has been really influential. I think, I think to everybody of all ages, we have every, all different ages in our class, but I think everybody really feels that quite profoundly. And it also has made a shared experience for everybody. And I really look forward each week to seeing who is going to be the next featured artist. Does is, is, is these choices come out of your background as, you know, you're in part of your schooling or your career? How did you get interested in in... I know you went to the Rhode Island School of Design. Was that did that started? Start well, it? yeah, I went there and I graduated from the Art Institute of Chicago. And um, I was also I was always very into art history. I, I you know I was consumed with it. You know, early on as an artist and the art world and what's going on in the art world and. Um, as I got older, I fell out of this kind of careerist outlook and um, I started to get more into uh, my 
my inner life, my spiritual life. Um, and now I come full circle looking at all of these artists again through, through new eyes in a sense. And um, I'm just so blown away by, by what these people did. I mean, we're looking mostly at older artists, focusing mostly on artists from uh, Impressionism on up through Modernism uh, up until, say, Andy Warhol. We don't go beyond him because everything shifted at that point. And I think the whole mystical aspect kind of faded out. Maybe it's coming back now, but so we go back to William Blake and we go up from there into symbolism and, you know, these very important movements. Um, but I don't do it chronologically and I do it a little bit popcorn style, but as it, as I, I'm weaving it all together, and at a certain point, you start to see how it all works together, how all of these artists have worked off of each other. And um, what was that? I'm gonna... always amazed by how relevant it seems. Each, I think it's because it's part of your journey, what's interested you, what you've been reading about, what you've seen, other influences, not just this, these artists and their images, but things that have caught you, your attention from a mystic perspective or just even what's happening in our times as, as you grow as a person. And then we, we have these shows that are a wonderful reflection of what you've been studying. And it always seems like, how can this be 1918? It feels like today. And yeah. it, uh, uh, we're, we, when we lost an artist to, to World War I, we were grieving in the class. I mean, we were sorry to see this artist go. It's such a, such a, it's like the opposite of academic, you know, it's so comes so from the center of our being and you always bring it back to that. And we always have our time with our altars and our, our time to look at our work and, and you know, weave it back together. So I could go on and on, you know, <laughs> a lot of enthusiasm for, for how meaningful it's been to me. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I do, I do tie in, um, Poetry. Uh, we, we've read a, a lot of Rilke and um, various po uh, poets of the, of the era that these artists were from. And also, I'm uh, just finishing up reading the Red Book by Carl Jung, and I'm very influenced by his work and uh, his impact um, in the arts. Um, so I, I often will refer to him or maybe do a small reading from him. Um, so, and you know, you can go back to William Blake who was another visionary, very much like Young, a uh, hundred years later. Um, so, but they were, they were visionary artists of, of the soul in a sense, you know, it was like, it was it was art making like uh, not not like what we think of it today. Really, it was it was tying in all facets of their being, you know. And and for Young, of course, this was his his crucible was was understanding the psyche. And he was brilliant, but he he couldn't, he knew that his mind wouldn't take him there. So he devised ways of working creatively through imagery, through writing, through painting, that would bring him to the wholeness that he was seeking. This is exactly what we're doing in class. Yeah, and this it's making me think how much I now defend my right to make art, not that, oh, I should make some art. <laughs> you know, that I, it's part of my wholeness in a way that it never was before. You know, I, I fell and broke my leg at the beginning of the year and I couldn't get to my art studio. So I set up an art table in the middle of my living room 
because it was part of my healing. It's part of my journey. And I, I think now when I think about other activities, I weigh them in, as to how much time they're going to take away from my personal art making. And I never used to do that. It was like, okay, fit it in, fit it in. And now it's like, no, I defend my, my right as a human to, to do that. So what do you think now that the COVID restrictions are starting to lighten? Do you want to continue doing Zoom classes? Are you looking forward to going back, being back in person? I know you had some lovely classes outdoors. What, what are you looking forward to with your own future as a teacher? Well, you know, I kind of like doing the Zoom classes. Yeah, I do. There's something about it. Um, as one of the uh, students in my other class said that uh, she loves that she's in the privacy of her own space, making the artwork. True. Um, nobody's looking over her shoulder, right? She's, and, um, and then, she, but she's, it's also a, a community too. Um, and uh yeah, we didn't really touch on the format of the class so much, but there is about an hour in of, of art making in the three-hour class that I'm doing online. Um, I would like to do live classes again too, and especially enjoy doing the uh, uh, the workshops outdoors. Um, that were more, got to be more focused on, um, well, I was doing them almost in a form of, of a grief uh, circle uh, because I felt like it was an important outlet for people to express themselves uh, about this crazy time we're in and uh, all the earth changes going on climate change and all of this uh and yet it's um yeah it, it's really i i feel a needed a needed outlet to have these create creativity circles that can serve uh to to move some of that energy that and 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 we can't move it alone the way we can do it in a group. I hope we're going to have both. You know, I agree with the student that it's really nice to have it, the Zoom class, and visit these other artists and and work in our own in our own space and and then meet together. Some of us probably love to just see each other in person again. So, and but what occurs to me is something else is going to cook up in your brain. You know, you're going to find some kind of a need that you want to express or you want to participate in or, or a celebration that you want to create and we'll just follow along Pied Piper that you know students that we are. Mm -hmm.